after a blowout loss to Duke in the Dome, Syracuse faced its toughest week of this season against two of the top dogs in the ACC. Well, both those dogs put up 90 pieces. 99 tonight from Pittsburgh in a 17-point victory over Syracuse, 99-81. to 81. The Orange dropped their third straight game of the season. And here on Orange Press Bus, we're here to give you all the re reaction, analysis. We have live coverage down from the Peterson Events Center. It's OPP, and it starts right now. Thanks so much for joining us in Orange Press Pass here in the Citrus TV studios alongside Leo Silverman and Luke Burgess. I'm Nick Zelaya. Syracuse falls to Pittsburgh on the road 99-81 to in a game where Syracuse led for two and a half minutes of the game. It felt like Pittsburgh had all the momentum in the world. Leo, starting with you, what's your first thought on this one? Nick, got to go to that old homage in sports. Tale of two halves is my first thoughts for this one, Luke. I mean, listen, you, cut, you start out the game. Pitt, they look like, I'm sitting there questioning, how is this a team that could potentially be the top of the ACC going into the tournament? I mean, they can't even get any offense going against the 2-3. And they can't play very much good defense against guys like Joe Girard. And then the second half, my God, it looked like it looked like the Golden State Warriors were running around there. Clay, Steph, shooting threes from 35 footer feet out. Couldn't do any wrong, and they end up blowing out Syracuse. Yeah, Leo, you're absolutely right. And it really did come down to that three ball in the second half. Pitt money from deep after struggling in the first half. Went from 24% to 68% in the second half. An absolute show from downtown for the Panthers. A big performance for Pittsburgh, who now with the win, are in sole possession of first place in the ACC with the loss for Miami and both the University of Virginia. But let's get into the highlights down from the Peterson Event Center. Syracuse going into a wild, wild environment, a packed house for the Oakland Zoo. Syracuse still looking for that 10th ACC win. And you guys mentioned it already, the three-point shooting was the story this one. Blake Hinson early on drills the triple and early lead for Pittsburgh. But Syracuse hanging around Joe Girard to Jesse Edwards, the Syracuse duo, and one that gave Syracuse one of their only couple leads early on. Benny Williams hits the jump shot. What a night for Williams after six straight games coming off the bench to come back in. And then there's Pittsburgh again hitting the triple, Leo. And Nick, it's like the 2-3 zone, not great against three-pointers, but with head and shooting like this, I don't think any sort of man defense could have stopped him tonight. 24 minutes for Quadir Copeland, the freshman, number 24, getting to the hoop, the crafty finish. But how about this name, Federico Federico. And he was doing business all night. The layup there, 37-33s to score going into the halftime break. Nike Sabandi. What about that dunk off the lob from the inbound pass? Then Greg Elliott, he hits the triple. And Luke, this one was all about the runs, and that's been the theme all year for Pitt. Yeah, Pitt has done this often. They've come into these second halves after playing maybe not so good in the first half and exploded these big runs, as you mentioned. It's been a key factor of their wins this season. Burton hits the jumper to make it a 14-point game. Benny Williams, 24 points, a career high. He hits the three-pointer, five for six from deep for the sophomore, but it was just all Pittsburgh in the second half. Once again, Greg Elliott hits the triple. 99-82 is your score. Six different scores for Pitt in this one, over 10 points. It was just all Panthers from the start. It was all Panthers from the start, but I, I think the one silver lining we can look at, and you can see it up there, Benny Williams, 23 points, five of six from three. That's a season high in both of those categories. Nearly had a double-double as well, so at least he got something to take home with the Cuse fans. Yeah, and of course, Joe Girard and Judah Mintz as well, consistent as ever. They've been a very steady, reliable source of offense for the Orange all season. Syracuse drops a 16 and 13 on the year. Pittsburgh picks up win 21. And now we bring in Zach Letson, who's down in Pittsburgh. Zach, you've been traveling all over the place. I hope you're enjoying all the travel. I want to ask you about the starting lineup because we saw a couple changes tonight. Benny Williams enters back the lineup again after a six game absence. We saw Justin Taylor make his first career start. How did that affect the Orange coming out of the gates and starting out this one? Well, the beginning of the game, Nick, was extremely exciting. If you're a Benny Williams fan and been supporting him all year, I've never seen a game, Nick, all season where Benny Williams has been more aggressive out of the gate. He was setting the tone for this Orange team. Nick, the first 10, 11 minutes of the game, he was the best player for Syracuse. He has 11 points out of the gate in those first 11, 12 minutes, and that helped keep Syracuse afloat 
we had a pretty close game, kind of back and forth, and he was the reason why. Justin Taylor, on the other hand, he gets the first start of his entire collegiate career, and I don't know if that maybe led to some jitters, but he was a complete non-factor in this game. He could have came off the bench. He could have been in the lineup. Didn't matter. No points, 0 for 2. He didn't really play a factor in this game, and, well, you kind of needed the shooting of Justin Taylor down the stretch in a game where it seemed like Pitt was hitting pretty much everything. How are we doing, Zach? This game was sold out for over a week, it seems like, with the Orange coming to town here. Now, obviously, Taylor two halves with this one, but how was the atmosphere in the arena, especially once Pitt starts hitting shots in the second half? Leo, this is what I'll say. I don't think there's a team in the entire ACC that cares more about playing Syracuse and beating Syracuse on their home court than the Pittsburgh Panthers. And the reason you can tell that is because the student section today was just raucous. It was packed to the brim. Everywhere you look all around me, we had zoo all the way around the court here. It was jam-packed. Everyone was in a bright yellow shirt. And this rivalry and this old school Big East rivalry, it's for real. And, and they came to play and the fans came to play as well. It was deafening. And so your question about how was it when they started hitting shots, it was overwhelming for the Syracuse team. It seemed like something they couldn't really recover from because of how loud it was in here. And Judah Mintz being a former Pitt commit, they were even louder when Judah had the ball. They were deafening from the word go in this game. And as Pitt made more shots in the second half, guys, it only got louder. Zach, speaking of Jim Beheim, obviously not the most popular guy in the 4-1-2. I want to ask you, he had some comments post-game, not so game-related, I guess. He talked about the NIL and the transfer portal. What was your reaction to that when he, uh, he discussed it? Definitely a more interesting press conference, Luke. But uh, the thing I, I guess I gathered most from the press conference with Jim Beheim was he held himself accountable for, for the mistake that he made with making that comment and basically was saying, yeah, I know I said Pitt when I was talking about teams that may have been bought, but he was more so talking about the NIL landscape as a whole and not Pitt specifically. Gave a lot of credit where it's due, as, as you should, to this Pitt team. They've worked extremely hard, and Jeff Cable's done an excellent job building a fantastic team, but it was more so apologetic. He realized the comments that he made. He also said he didn't think that he was on camera and taped, which – I'm not sure that should make a difference one way or another, but more so apologetic and accountable that he held Pitt to that standard and he gave the Panthers a lot of credit, as he should. This is an amazing Pitt team that's going to be going to the NCAA tournament. Thanks so much for joining us on Orange Press Pass, Zach. I hate to say it for Coach Bayheim, but NIL's going nowhere, so he's got plenty of time to figure out the whole NIL and transfer portal stuff. We'll take a quick break here on Orange Press Pass. When we get back, we'll dive deeper into this Syracuse loss against Pittsburgh, 99-81. These two will discuss some of the three-point shooting, what went wrong, the paint play for Pittsburgh. We'll discuss it all when we come back. Thank you. 
We're just getting started on Orange Press Pass. Nick Zalai here with Leo and Luke over there at the wall. Syracuse falls 99-81 at Pitt to finish off a two-game road trip against Clemson and Pittsburgh where they were just dominated on all ends of the floor. And Leo, I'm going to throw it to you here. We've got to talk about Federico Federico. It would be a shame if we weren't to mention him so many times throughout this show, but he was just dominant for Pitt on both ends of the floor tonight. Yeah, Nick, Federico Federico playing both ends of the court so well, playing double, throwing double, making sure Syracuse was seeing double. And I want to really illustrate it by taking a look into this game. And we're going to run through the first play here. And it's going to be without Federico Federico on the defensive end for Pitt. And you're going to see here, Jesse Edwards is going to be the successor here. Easy drive for Joe Girard, and look at Jesse Edwards. Already has his man sealed. That's the backup for Pitt here, and is able to get the and one dunk because of it. You just can't give up that much space if you're a defender in the paint, and Jesse Edwards benefits from it. But now, let's throw Federico Federico back on the court and see how a similar play goes out. Really a nice camera angle we get here, but Jesse Edwards doesn't get that seal this time, tries to go up for a layup, but Federico Federico is all over that thing. And the best part... Pitt comes up with the ball here, and they're going to get out and run. And what does Federico do? He beats out Jesse Edwards on the transition for an easy dunk. So, Luke, he's not even getting it done on the defensive end. You saw a great post defense, but he beats Jesse Edwards back to his own hoop to get two points here. And it certainly wasn't second chance scoring, but I hear that you noticed that Pitt was able to get a lot of points maybe outside of transition off rebound. Yeah, Leo, if Pitt was creating second chances and maybe even third and fourth chances all night long. Really excellent job for them. Right here, you're going to see they start with possession. They take the ball up the court. And, you know, they did a really good job of creating extra time. They made these passes to space the floor super well. And right here, you're going to see a sequence that is incredibly impressive from the Panthers. They really like to do a good job on the board. So one shot goes up in the corner. It's no good. Going to get the ball back. Uh, Judah Mintz touches it for a minute there. Another three from way out. That one doesn't go. Get the ball back one more time off Justin Taylor going on? on the inbound. Now, back at the logo all the way. This is the third chance now for Pitt on this possession. Step over in the corner from three, and it's good. And that was really the theme all night long. You see right again, right here, Pitt running the floor, comes down across the logo. And this time, it's going to be your boy, Federico Federico, inside he gets fouled on the shot there. He's going to head to the line and pick up points. Federico Federico was a huge X factor all night long. And yeah, this team, you can't give them extra chances. They're a gritty team that likes to play hard. Certainly showed it tonight. Well, Syracuse changed up the lineup coming into the game and only played six guys at least 17 minutes. That's including the starters and then Quadir Copeland came off the bench. And it's a completely different outlook to what this Syracuse team started the year with. You go back to early November against Lehigh. They were throwing 11, 12 guys on the floor. Now it's all the way down to six. Leo, is this a trend we may see for the rest of the season going into ACC tournament play where we really shrink the rotation? Or do you think Coach Behai maybe needs to go back to that eight, nine, ten guys touching the floor each game? Honestly, Nick, with how many of these players might be looming, who knows who might exit, could go a couple of areas, leave Syracuse after a kind of disappointing season. I would hope that Beheim just throws out and plays a lot of these guys because Chris Bell doesn't even step on the court. Nobody except Quadir Copeland plays more than six minutes off the bench. You didn't see Cy Mir. Justin Taylor only had 17 minutes when he started. I would hope if you're going to try and make a run, it's got to be a deep pool of players. And the Pitt Panthers, Luke, showed that off. I mean, we're talking about we're talking about Henson this entire game. He comes off the bench for these guys and he had 22 points. Yeah, he was incredibly impressive tonight, and he knew that there were going to be people here watching him. He said, you know, at my last senior night, I only had six people watching. Tonight, it felt like thousands. He's a Pittsburgh guy, and you know that he's got this entire crowd behind him, as Zach mentioned earlier. Yeah, a really inspiring performance for the whole team. We'll see if this lineup can do it for Syracuse when it comes down to ACC tournament play if they can knock down shots and tonight that was the case to be honest I mean three-point shooting they were they shot the long ball over 50% only took 16 three-pointers and well that was the issue with it they only took 16 three-pointers while Pitt they made 16 16 for 41 from beyond the arc Luke it felt like Syracuse just wasn't able to stop the Pitt three-point shooting a team that only makes about five per game but tonight they were able to knock down 16 against the orange yeah, it was a really impressive night beyond the arc. And, you know, they started a little bit more like you mentioned, Nick, struggling a little bit in the first half. But it's as I detailed earlier, later on in the game, they get going in the second half 68%. Think about that number for a minute. Oh. 
And, you know, Hinson, a huge part of that from deep all night long, making a huge impact for the Panthers. And really, that's what won them this game. But late on, Syracuse able to hang with them well in the first half, but get, get in that second half, and they just caught fire from three, really couldn't miss. Yeah, they certainly couldn't miss Luka. Now, I'm, when it comes to hoops, I'm not the biggest stats guy. I played it for a long time. I like to use the eye test, but these stats from, the, from these two halves, it just explodes to me. I mean, Blake Henson shot more threes alone than Syracuse as a team shot, and that's just absolutely egregious. And you mentioned they started 5 for 21 in this game. They looked lackluster from deep, and somehow that second half run came across. Everybody was hitting triples, and it was to Syracuse's demise. Henson to shoot more three-pointers alone than Syracuse is just crazy to talk about. But let's get to our Orange Press Pass player of the game, and it's Nelly Cummings. His first career double-double, 14 points, 13 assists for the Pittsburgh native on senior night. He spent a lot of time at Bull. He spent one year at Bowling Green, four years at Colgate, and now he's back in his hometown of Pittsburgh playing for the Panthers, who now have the number one seed in the ACC. We'll take another break here on Orange Press Pass. When we come back, we'll get to the Q's waiver wire. Which guys are we adding onto our roster for postseason play, which we may have to drop? Well, Leo and Luke, they'll tell you who to pick up. Don't go anywhere. My own peers have told me that every single one of them have told me now they want to be like me now. I want people to laugh about it, but I also want them to see what is a typical day this night at the university. One day I was on the tourney or going up to the South Campus one day, and then all of a sudden I was not expecting this and then and then all of a sudden yes that's our tv star tournament My name is Jenna Cooper, and I am the relationship psychologist. My name is Paige Phillips. I am the astrologer. And this is Psychverse Stars. Thanks for joining us on Orange Press Pass. Luke Burgess, Leo Silverman, I'm Nick Salai. It's time for the Q's waiver wire. And with postseason play right around the corner, you guys familiar with fantasy, I'm sure. Have you oh, ever had that big pickup on the waiver wire to help you in the postseason oh, at yeah. all? Oh, yeah, huge late on in the season. You got to make those big time acquisitions. It's important stuff. Well, let's talk about a couple of Q's guys you might have to pick up. If you want to, you know, make a good push in the playoffs with it right around the corner, we're going to start with Benny Williams. He's a guy that started. Most of the season, he went that six-game absence of being out of the starting lineup, but he's entered back in, has a career-high 24 points. Luke, I want to start with you. Is this a guy you're picking up onto your team, or are you dropping him? You know, uh, I'm dropping Benny Williams, to be quite frank. You know, he may have had a career performance tonight for his time at Syracuse, but overall, I just need to see a little bit more consistency. Benny Williams really hasn't been able to put together a string of really successful games. And before I can say I'm going to pick him up, I'm going to need to see a little bit more from him on the shooting front. He was great tonight, but it's got to be consistent. That's the name of the game, especially when you get into the NCAA tournament. Luke, he wasn't just great tonight. He was the best shooter from pure splits out of everybody. Five to six from three, pretty good from the field as well. And I'm going to pick him up for that reason out of my squad for the postseason run because I'm going to play by the hot hand. All right, listen, there's not a lot of people on the Syracuse offense that really you can ride out and trust outside of Judah Mintz and Joe Girard right now. So you need that third option. I'll pick the guy that just had a 20-point game shooting five of six from three, and on top of all that, nine rebounds. Scott nearly had a double-double, and all season long we've been talking about how badly this team needs rebounding help outside Jesse Edwards. So I think he's going to be the guy to help in the postseason run. It's a huge confidence booster, too, to shoot five for six, a guy that's not really known for his three-point shot but able to hit them. Next, we're going to go to Quadir Copeland, the only guy 
to come off the bench and play significant minutes tonight for Syracuse. And Jim Beheim had a little bit to say about Copeland's play after the game. Um, I thought Quadir would help us a little bit. He made a couple plays, but he's not quite ready. You know, not quite ready for this. Six points and four fouls in 17 minutes for uh, Quadir Copeland. So maybe he's not ready for Bayheim's team to be on the floor. But how about Coach Silverman? You putting him, you adding him to the team, or are you like, hey, I agree with you, Coach Bayheim. We got to drop him. Nick, you know better than anyone. I don't usually agree with Coach Bayheim with some of his strategies on the team, but I actually am going to lean with him on this one. I am going to drop Quadir Copeland because he kind of Bayheim kind of said it best himself. What did you see from Quadir Copeland outside of one maybe really acrobatic layup? I'll, I'll give him that. He's very good in that aspect. Not very good in the defensive end because he's he's six six. So listed as a guard, you can't really play him at the two. They try and stick him at the three, but he's not good at rebounding there. Just ending up picking up a lot of fouls. He doesn't really wow me on the defensive end a lot, and offensively he becomes a bit of a liability like Saimir. So at least with Benny Williams, you have a hot game to go off of on the offensive end. He has the rebounding. Quadir Copeland, nothing for me. Yeah, for me, I'm going to have to agree with you and agree with Jim Beheim. Not a lot of people know that, you know, I don't know if I agree with Leo on too much, but I everyone knows that I don't agree with Jim Beheim on a lot of things. And this is one where I'm going to have to side with Beheim. Kudir Copeland, he didn't look ready tonight. He didn't look up to the test. And I think all night long, his inexperience really showed. Hasn't played enough of those big time situations to be ready for a game like Pitt. It'll be interesting to see if Copeland continues to get significant minutes as we get to the last couple of games of the regular season and ACC tournament play. But going back to you, Luke, let's talk a bit about Chris Bell because he starts every single game all year and then he just doesn't tonight. He doesn't find the court at all. Zero minutes in the stat sheet after posting seven points in 19 minutes against Clemson the other night. So, Luke, I mean, is this a guy that you're trusting who's reliable? You add him to your roster and say, hey, maybe he'll get some significant minutes, continue to play well, or is the guy you're dropping? You know, Nick, maybe me and Jim Beheim think more alike than I thought because Chris Bell has been starting for this team all year, and for me, I'm going to pick him up. I really like the way that he's been able to space the floor this year and create shots. I think he's a unique player, and I think he's someone that you're going to have to ride in the future. You never know if Judah Mintz is going to be back for next season. Chris Bell, he might have an elevated role going into next year. I think that it's really important that Bell is a, a key performer down low. Obviously, he didn't play tonight. We're not exactly sure why. But yeah, Chris Bell is someone that I think can be vital to this team's success as they move forward from this season into next year. Certainly could be pretty successful moving forward. He's going to have to because the forward position for this squad is just is, is egregious. It's mm -hmm. hard to look at, honestly, throughout the roster. But if we're talking about the postseason run, I'm going to drop him off for this one because it's kind of the same logic I'm bringing with Benny. If they're not starting him, he has zero minutes. You're going to throw him out against a big-time ACC opponent down in Greensboro? I'm not. And Chris Bell also, I, you know, if I'm the head coach, you're playing head coach Silverman over here. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty hard-nosed, and I like to, you know, you got to earn your keep on defense to be successful on offense. And Chris Bell has had five or more rebounds in two games, and he's supposed to be the big forward to pick up rebounds. Not going to cut it for me. It seems like it's kind of been maybe an effort issue on the defensive end. If you're not going to work hard on the defensive end, then why should there be any time for you trying to shoot a bunch, shoot a bunch of threes up, trying to score some points? So for the run in the postseason, Nick, I'm just going to bench him. It's a young group of forwards that are all trying to fight for minutes. you got Malik Brown. you got Justin Taylor, Benny Williams, and, of course, Chris Bell. We'll take one last break here on Orange Press Pass. When we come back, we'll take a look around the conference. Tons of action in the ACC, plus these two will give their final thoughts on the Syracuse-Pittsburgh game.
Wrapping up Orange Press Pass, Leo Silverman, Luke Burgess, I'm Nick Celaya. Let's take a look around the ACC. Tons of action on a jam-packed Saturday of college basketball. Syracuse, of course, falls to Pittsburgh by 17. But Leo, I mean, big games with the ACC tournament just about a week and a half away now. And what, how wishy-washy has Clemson been so far towards the end of the oh. season here? I, I, I can't get a single B on the Clemson right now. I mean, they blow out Syracuse. Now they take down NC State. They put 100 up. They're, well, they're up there with Pitt. How are we having two teams in the ACC score over 95 points in one day, Luke? Uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive. I mean, these are NBA numbers out yeah. there. 96, 99, I would think, you know, maybe this was a Miami Heat if you want to go down south, not to the Clemson Tigers by any means. But how about Virginia? Two losses in a row now. They fall to North Carolina today, and North Carolina trying to make a bid to get into that NCAA tournament. And a big rivalry down in Tallahassee, Miami, just falling short. Matthew Cleveland with a three-point buzzer beater to beat Miami, the number 13 Hurricanes. And looking at the standings now, this was a big game regarding standings implications. Pittsburgh's sole possession now. UVA falls to North Carolina, and now they're all alone in first place. They're all alone in first place, and what a perfect time to do it. You mentioned Virginia slipping. We see Miami slip up as well. Now Clemson gets to play around with seeding. And on top of that, you can look all the way down the board. Syracuse, 9-9 nine and nine in conference, and they got a big-time opponent. They're going to take on Wake to finish out their year. Yeah, and things really couldn't have gotten any better for Pitt. You get in the first place with a big win against Syracuse at home in front of a sold-out crowd, and the two teams that are right there with you lose. I mean, they're going to be celebrating in Oakland tonight. The way the bracket's look if Syracuse can win that 8-9 matchup, they can face Pittsburgh once again in the ACC tournament. Up next for OPP, Syracuse faces Georgia Tech. That's this coming Tuesday, an 11 p.m. show. A battle between Syracuse and the 12 and 17 Yellow Jackets, Leo. Nick, for me, this has just got to be some sort of tune-up game before you take on Wake Forest. And that's going to be a big-time game. You have Melo coming back. Everybody celebrating the 20th anniversary. Got to take care of business against Georgia Tech and these Yellow Jackets. Or Wake Forest is going to be a lot harder on the team. Yeah, I mean, you look at the stats right there, Leo, and obviously this is a game that Syracuse should win. They got to get this win going into the last two home games of the season. You're playing in front of your home fans. You haven't given the home fans a lot to be happy about or to cheer about this season. This is an opportunity to do that. Make them feel a little bit good about themselves going into the ACC tournament. The Orange lose their third straight game, 99-81 to Pittsburgh, and we're here. Well, we were here to uh, cover it all. Leo, some final thoughts on tonight's loss for the Orange. My final thought, Nick, is uh, the future looks real bleak for Syracuse going forward. And I, I did try to make sure to dress occasionally of for course. a funeral style because I don't know what the rest of this program's future looks like even past the postseason. Will Judah Mintz go to the draft? Everybody can transfer out, obviously, if they don't like how they're going. There are no question marks at the forward position. No replacements at guard going forward. Joe Girard leaves. Jesse Edwards. More questions than answers. And I honestly just think it's such a bleak outcome for the future. Yeah, I hate to agree with you. And because of that, I'm actually going to go to the pit side and talk about their performance. This game really came down to the three ball in the second half for Pitt. They played outstanding. You know, we've mentioned this number so many times now, but 68% in the second half, a really, really outstanding performance for them. And Hinson shot the ball so, so well. Uh, you, they've got a lot to be excited about going into the ACC tournament and the NCAA tournament. A dominant performance for Syracuse. Now we're at Do It for us on Orange Press Pass. Thanks so much for joining us over the last 30 minutes. We'll be back Tuesday night for Syracuse, Georgia Tech. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.